Uh, hello everyone, welcome to this talk entitled Safe Geological CO2 Storage. Uh, my name is Ismael Imar Falcon Suarez and I'm a researcher of the Ocean Bioscience Group, the National Oceanography Center. My research includes the development of experimental approaches at the laboratory scale to simulate uh, complex processes that occur in deep geological reservoirs with a particular interest in improving our understanding of uh, those reservoirs use it for CO2 sequestration. Well, let me start by introducing the problematic related to carbon dioxide. CO2 is produced from both natural and human sources. Natural sources include the composition, ocean release and respiration. Human sources include the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil or natural gas but also semen production and deforestation. Human activities have dramatically increased atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide since the Industrial Revolution and has now reached dangerous unprecedented levels. This has altered the natural balance and triggered a global warming effect, which results when the atmosphere traps solar heat radiating from the Earth toward the space. The main problem is that CO2 is a very complex waste to recycle. Think about this. In the first place, how can you convince anyone that something invisible, odorless, soundless and impalpable is causing troubles? Well, it is indeed causing troubles and it is happening quickly and massively. The most realistic large-scale mitigation strategy is carbon capture and storage, or CCS as commonly known. CCS consists of capturing the CO2 from the main sources of emission, such as burning fuel industries, for instance, and injecting it into deep geological formation for its permanent storage. CO2 storage reservoirs have to meet two essential criteria. First, having a, por a porous medium where to inject the CO2, which is known as the host formation, and second, having a ceiling formation with low porosity and low permeability overlapping the host formation, which is going to prevent the CO2 to migrate to shallower areas. Deep siliciclastic saline aquifers are among the preferred options for geological CO2 sequestration because of their low reactivity to CO2 and high storage capacity. Porosity conditions the storage efficiency while permeability the injectivity. So, in other words, it is essential to know how large the available volume in the reservoir is and how well connected the pores are to ensure the CO2 storage is both efficient and effective. Porosity is a crucial concept to understand why injecting CO2 in reservoir is the only realistic alternative to tackle current CO2 emission levels. To explain porosity in a simple way, I will present a short home experiment conducted with the help of my daughter Gaia, who is here enthusiastically representing the new generation of marine geoscientists. Gaia is going to use a container to measure the porosity of a sun layer. First, she measured the weight of the container. Second, she measured the weight of the container filled with water. Third, the container filled with dry sand. And finally, the container filled with sun saturated in water. With the results collected by Gaia, and keeping in mind that because the density of the water is equal to 1, water weight and water volume are the same, then we can calculate the porosity by just dividing the volume of the water needed to saturate the sun by the total volume of the container. Gaia's experiment concluded that the porosity of this sun was around 43%. This means that 43% of the total sand volume is actually available for storing fluid or gas. 43% of Geyer container is not a large volume, of course, but 43% of a reservoir with uh, 5,000 cubic kilometers is, is a lot. The second important aspect we need to understand is the depth factor. A minimum depth of 1000 meter is required for an efficient CO2 storage. This is because of the increasing pressure underground. 
both lithostatic and hydrostatic pressure increase with depth. The former is related to the weight of the material, while the latter is the result of the weight of the water column. In this example, we have a brave hunt in a pore at uh, 1000 meter depth who is having a bath at uh, 10 megapascal of pressure while she has to support the grains at 20 megapascal of pressure to avoid the collapse of her geological bathroom. This is crucial for CO2 storage efficiency. CO2 is a gas at atmospheric condition but it's very compressible. Then by increasing the pressure up to the 10 megapascal of the hunt bath, the density is actually increasing above 600 times, which means that 600 times CO2 can be storage in the same volume at such pressure. So porosity, permeability and depth are key factors when selecting a target reservoir. Although reservoir rocks are a priori stable and robust structures, we need to be sure that during our injection activities, we preserve the geomechanical integrity of the whole geological system. For safe CCS activities, we need to characterize several aspects that can condition our interpretation of the reservoir behavior during and after the CO2 injection. This includes the characterization of the transport and mechanical properties and the mineralogical transformations that can result from CO2 fluid rock interactions. To this aim, we apply the most commonly used geophysical techniques in reservoir exploration, which are seismic and electromagnetic remote sensing tools. With them, we can distinguish changes in both the rock and fluid properties and assess the main concerns related to CCS by combining a pre-injection reservoir characterization and a continuous monitoring of the CO2 plume advance during and after stopping the CO2 injection. Among the main aspects involved in CCS, I would like to highlight the following one. First, the pore fluid distribution. We need to understand how the CO2 will spread according to the regional flow regime the ejection flow rate and the reservoir permeability, among other parameters. We also need to evaluate the expected reservoir dynamic depending on the CCS stage. For instance, injecting CO2 in a saline aquifer will partially drain the brine in the pores in the first place and during the, the injection lasts. But when the CO2 injection stops, CO2 will progressively dissolve into the original brine which will lead to local pore pressure drops towards the injection point and consequently a natural aquifer recharge. The geophysical signatures associated to these two stages, drainage and imbibition, are different and therefore we expect that it also varies from the front to the tail part of the CO2 plume. Second, undesired overpressure events. We need to develop monitoring tools and methodologies to identify and characterize CO2 injection induced pressure build up in storage reservoirs to predict the onset of mechanical instability and improve in situ quantification and understanding of the injection related processes. This includes lab experiments and numerical modeling to simulate overpressure scenario in or during CCS uh, activities. Third, the role of fractures. In general, fractures are present in any kind of rock of the earth crust at any scale. We need to characterize the fracture system in the reservoir in terms of sealing efficiency and how they can compromise the geomechanical stability of the reservoir during the CO2 injection and also their role on CO2 spreading depending on the connectivity of these uh, fractures. Finally, the fluid rock CO2 interaction conditions the reservoir reactivity. This is a very important aspect. So let me deepen into the reservoir reactivity uh, in further detail. CO2 storage reservoirs are complex systems. 
CO2 is a reactive fluid that when injected into deep geological formations, it might trigger various couple physical phenomena as a result of pressure and temperature gradients and chemical disequilibrium. This leads to the so-called uh, couple thermohydromechanochemical phenomena. CO2 fluid rock reactions lead to dissolution precipitation processes that might particularly affect porosity and permeability which play a crucial role in reservoirs in terms of uh, storage capacity and CO2 spreading. So ultimately, it may even compromise the geomechanical stability of the reservoir. Carbonate minerals are particularly vulnerable to CO2 and the potential reaction uh, coming up from, this, uh, from, from CO2 and carbonate minerals contact includes both dissolution and precipitation processes. Unlike siliciclastic reservoirs are barely reactive to CO2 and therefore they are the preferred options for CO2 storage. However, there they are uh, other physicochemical processes occurring during CO2 injection. For instance, CO2 induced soil precipitation effects, which has been my main research topic for the last uh, three years. In essence, CO2 is a drying out process that can trigger salt precipitation from the ions dissolved in the parental brine. This salt will reduce reservoir porosity and affect permeability. We have identified and quantified this effect in the laboratory and determined its geophysical footprint, enabling the early detection of the process from the geophysical data. This slide shows the presence of uh, soil detected using three different tools, a CT scan, light microscope, and a scanning electron microscope. Furthermore, we have demonstrated that when cessing the CO2 injection and the aquifer char occurs, salt newly dissolves, leaving behind some permanent changes in the original reservoir properties. This permanent effect might vary from one reservoir to another. And therefore, CO2 induced salt precipitation should be studied prior CCS, as it might compromise both the injectivity and the reservoir integrity to some extent. All in all, for safe geological CO2 storage, it is crucial to conduct a comprehensive reservoir characterization before starting the injection activities and a good monitoring not only during the injection stage but also after cessing the uh, injection activities. Equally, it is important to conduct laboratory tests simulating the CO2 injection under realistic conditions in a controlled manner so that we can learn about the complex couple of processes that occur in reservoirs during CO2 injection. With experimental data, we can then improve existing numerical models and create new ones to enhance our interpretation of the data collected in the field for safe CO2 storage activities. Thank you very much.